Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about the comprehension strategy visualizing. Now we know that proficient readers are able to both spontaneously and kind of on demand create mental images of what they are reading by taking into account their past experiences and their five senses. And when students are able to go ahead and visualize something and create that mental image, they're able to connect with their reading to better comprehend it. So in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and share three easy ways to help your students practice visualizing and therefore better comprehending the stories that they both read and listen to. While I go get everything ready, go ahead and like this video and be sure you are subscribed to my channel so you can see all of my future teaching videos. Let's get started. When introducing visualizing to my students in the classroom, I really like to get them thinking about their feelings first because when we make different visualizations based on a book we read, it usually has to do with our past experiences and our feelings really come into play because these visualizations and the connections we make with stories are often going to be very personal. So activity number one I'm going to share with you helps students really recognize that and the activity is called visualize your feelings. This activity is pretty simple. You will basically use a sheet like this one and you're just going to go ahead and give students three different feeling words and they are going to have to draw an image that comes to mind. Now when I'm teaching this I really emphasize to my students that I don't want them to just draw a face with that type of emotion shown on it, whether it's happy or sad, something like that. Instead, I want them to really try and reach into their mind and think of a memory or a scene that really elicits this feeling from them. This is generally a pretty quick activity and it's a great one to really activate students' minds when they are thinking about creating a visualization based off something they hear. Now, some great words to use when trying this out include frustrated, shy, terrified, embarrassed, relaxed, confident, proud, silly, cheerful, concerned, jealous, and happy. Now, an important part of this activity is after students go ahead and draw their memory or draw their kind of scene that they have thought of when they heard each word, they should turn and talk with a partner, at least one other person, to kind of compare how each illustration and each visualization that they made is different. This is really going to emphasize that our, you know, our personal experiences play a lot into our visualizations that we make and our connections we make with different stories. As a side note, this activity also works really well for social emotional learning and just getting students to think about their different feelings and what comes to mind. But I really like to use it to prime our visualization skills. Now I will go ahead and drop this uh, sheet that I shared here, this little recording sheet. I will drop that for free down in the comments, but just so you know that is also included in my comprehension strategies that stick unit that looks like this. So if you already own that, then you can go ahead and grab that from there. All right, tip number two. All right, after students recognize that our mental images and our visualizations are likely going to be a little bit personal based on our past experiences, that is when I like to dive right into activity number two, which is to use all five of our senses. I explained to students that when we are making our own visualizations, we are really taking into account all five of our senses to create this image. And the authors that write these stories, they are actually using some vivid imagery based on all five senses to kind of help us form these mental images. Now in teaching this, I definitely like to kind of model this and talk through this first. And I like to do that with an anchor chart like this one. Now you'll notice in this anchor chart that here it basically is just a big speech bubble and it says these words help me visualize and then over the course of a week or so I like to pick different mentor texts here you can see come on rain and what I do is as I read aloud I think aloud and I explain different sensory words and I point out different sensory words the author uses that really help me visualize here you can see I picked out endless heat Ooh, how does that help my visualization? I can tell that it is hot. Wet slicking our arms and the legs. This story in the rain, you can feel the rain, just the wetness on your arms and on your legs. Heavy trucks rumble past. So you can hear the sounds of the trucks rumbling and then drops plop down big. 
The sensory details that the author chooses to use in this text really helps us create this beautiful visualization of what is going on in the story. And as you can see in the anchor chart, I use sticky notes so that way I can point them out and put them up there. And then throughout the week, I can take off those sticky notes, replace it with a new mentor text, and we can point out those sensory details as well for the new book. Now, Come On Rain is a great mentor text, but if you're looking for some other ones, I also love Two Bad Ants, The Salamander Room, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Stuck, Paperboy, and The Gruffalo. All of those are going to have great sensory details that you can actually pull out and get your students really visualizing what's happening in the story. Okay, and activity number three for helping students with visualization is to go ahead and have them make mind movies. Now, I recognize that making a mind movie is nothing new when it comes to visualization, but I also know that teachers tend to start here when they are teaching the skill to visualize, to help us comprehend. But I like to make sure that I do this after those other types of activities. So first I would have taught explicitly exactly what is a visualization. It's a mental image we make in our head. I would have explained to them that it is usually personal based on your past experiences, which is what we did in our feelings kind of activity. And then I also like to really explain that we have to use all five of our senses in order to create that mental image and that the author uses sensory details to help us do that. Only after teaching both of those things do I like to introduce making mind movies as we listen to a story. Now when I teach students what a mind movie is, I explain to them that I'm going to read them a story or a passage, and any of those mentor texts I mentioned previously will work for this, and I like to do it without showing them any pictures. So they can sit, they can close their eyes if they want to, or you can just read the story and choose to not show the pictures. And what I like to have students do is kind of think about the characters as our actors and our actresses in the story and the setting. So they're going to be listening to those sensory details about what the setting is like. And that is our background for the movie. I also explained to them that just like a real movie, in our story, everything is not static, right? Oftentimes the setting changes as you go through a story. The characters don't always have the same feeling at the beginning of the story that they do at the end of the story. Our characters evolve and they change. So kind of through each scene of this storybook, we would need to think about how our characters and the setting and the plot of the story are changing. Even as I just said that out loud, I'm thinking of how many different skills you can really work on with your students by having them practice visualizing. Like I said, our characters change from beginning to the end of a story. Visualizing can just help them really picture that and see why that's happening. Now, of course, you could just have students sit there and kind of picture what's happening. You could stop at different points within the story and have them turn and talk to a partner about what they see. But another way you can do that is by using a sheet like this one. Here I have three boxes that you can stop at three different parts along the story. I also have a sheet like this one, which is the same, but it has six different boxes instead. These type of boxes really give students a minute to stop and think about what they're seeing in the scene of the movie as it's happened so far and jot it down. They can go ahead and just use a pencil and sketch it out. You could have them use crayons and really illustrate it. It's totally up to you. By breaking up a story or a passage into smaller sections, it really helps your students realize, like I said earlier, that our stories are not static. Characters change, settings change, feelings change. Many things happen throughout our story and throughout our plot. Think about that roller coaster that happens of our story elements and by the end of the story it might look totally different than the beginning of the story. Now after students go ahead and complete one of these sheets, I would absolutely have them turn to a partner and kind of explain their story or retell their story using their own visual images. Those mind movie sheets are also included in my comprehension strategies that stick unit where I have a lot more about visualizing and many other comprehension strategies geared towards kindergarten, first and second grade. So there you have three easy activities to do to help your students practice that visualizing comprehension strategy. If any of these were new to you or if you're excited about using one of them, let me know down in the comments and let me know if you want to see some other comprehension strategies type videos. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new teaching video I make. See you next time. Bye.